What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about spring security filter chains. Filter chains, there's a lot of things that you can do with filter chains, but I just want you to know, or I just want you to focus on right now, we are worrying about configuration. Don't worry so much about what filter chains can do. It's good just to know broadly what they can do. And once we can kind of get that nailed down, then we will use filter chains to do our very first configuration for our app. So take a look at this nice little visual diagram that I have right here. When we first send an HTTP request to our server, what is going to happen is it's going to go through a set of filter chains, security filters, security filter chains, whatever you want to call them. And they are just kind of the way that they sound. They are just a chain of filters that you use to do or perform certain actions on your spring security. And just to kind of foreshadow in the future what we are going to be talking about, whenever you see a do filter, or if you're ever going through a actual code base and you see this word do filter, what you have is an actual filter chain. And whenever we send the HTTP request, it's going to go through all our filters. And what we are about to configure in a minute is going to be what kind of bundles them all together and allows you to configure your filter chain so that you can perform certain actions on it. It's almost like a form of middleware. Whether it really is a true middleware, I honestly don't really know, but if I had to describe it, it is middleware and it has the name filter chain in it because of the chain of responsibility pattern. If you really want to nerd out and you really want to get into it, research a little bit about the chain of responsibility pattern and you'll begin to know a lot about how filter chains really work. And each filter that it goes through, it's going to pass through it the HTTP request and the HTTP response depending on which way that it is going. Now, you don't really need to know that, but broadly speaking, you just need to know that the request is gonna go all the way through these filter chains till it finally hits this serverlet request where it will finally get shown the controllers or where it will finally be routed to the controllers from the servlet, which is what a servlet does. It takes the HTTP request and performs some kind of action to it depending on the Java code. and Whenever we have this do filter thing that I just previously mentioned before, we can go in in certain places and we can kind of inject our own logic or we can inject our own uh, code that will be able to perform actions on this HTTP servlet request response. And you will see this here in a second. You'll see this HTTP servlet response, not now, not in this video, but down the line response and request you will see this, and whenever you see this, just remember that this HTTP servlet response request is what is going to route these actual requests and responses. That's what they are. They are requests and responses. So let's just go ahead into our code and let's code up our very first actual HTTP uh, security filter chain. And what we wanna do is we don't actually have any place to hold our security well, I actually made this folder beforehand. This actually shouldn't be here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this so we can get, pretend like it's not there. Just pretend like you didn't see that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm actually going to add my very first folder. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to add my very first folder called security. Now you can call this whatever you want to. You could call it, I don't know, you could call it Pokemon if you want to, but I just like to call it security. And I like to put all my security stuff in a security folder because I think it just looks really good. You can also name the class whatever you want to, but usually security config is a good way to describe it. And it seems to be what most people call it. Some people call it different things, but I'm just gonna call it security config because once again, it just kind of makes sense. Next, we're gonna add this configuration thing to let Spring Boot know that this is a configuration file and this needs to be added to the bean context. After that, what we're gonna do we're gonna go in here and then we need to add this enable web security complex con annotation to the top so that it will let Sp Spring Boot know that this is where we're keeping our security configuration. 
Then after that, we're going to go ahead add a bean because we want to be we want this thing to be a bean. Then we will go in here and we're going to once again call this or not once again we're just going to call this security filter chain and this is our security filter chain and this is where we're going to have our security filter chain and this is where we are going to configure our security filter chain now is this a true security filter chain not really this is more or less just how we're going to configure our security filter chain because once again we need that in order for the actual routing and for and for to actually have a place for a request to go before they get to the actual controllers. Because if we don't have the filter chains, there will be no way for the request to be intercepted before they actually get to the controllers. After that, we're going to have HTTP. And just because we are, uh, this is a course, this isn't a production app, we're going to go ahead in here and we are going to disable uh, CSRF. If we don't do this, you're going to get a bunch of errors. It's going to be really annoying. So before you actually deploy, you want to be able to uh, turn that off or configure CSRF the way that it's truly supposed to be configured. But for right now, uh, we're just going to go ahead and turn it off. Next thing, we're going to set our, we're going to bring in what we have, what we need right here. We're going to bring in our security filter chain, and we're also going to bring in HTTP security. Okay, so next, what we're going to do is, this is going to be almost like a default. So we're going to have any request, and any request that comes through needs to be authenticated. If it's not authenticated, what would be the point in even having uh, security? Okay, so next we'll have HTTP basic, and this is essentially going to set it so that it will be in the form of HTTP as opposed to HTTPS. Next, what we have is we have, the, we're gonna go get our HTTP again. Then we're going to actually go ahead and build this. And this is a builder pattern that's going to build this whole entire uh, actual chain for us. And that's supposed to be disable instead of disable. Okay, so right now we have our security filter chain. That's pretty much it. And that is going to be just enough so that we can understand what a security filter chain is. We can get our actual uh, default ready. And this doesn't even change the app any. This, the app will load exactly as it was before. And this is just so that we can begin actually start working on it and we can learn a little bit about security filter chains. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.